We remember the rocket's roar, the launch of a Saturn V, a symphony of fire and thunder that shook the ground and rattled the sky. We remember the walk, that first small step on a world untouched. But what about the journey in between? What about the quiet, uncelebrated pieces of genius that made the impossible possible? This is a story about a vehicle, not a gleaming rocket or a sleek command module, but a machine built for a dust-choked silent world, a machine of impossible constraints and defiant ingenuity. This is the story of the lunar roving vehicle, the LRV. For the final three Apollo missions, Apollo 15, 16, and 17, the landing sites were chosen for their scientific value, but they were also vast. To get to the deepest secrets of the moon, to cover the miles of terrain needed to find a scientific treasure trove, the astronauts couldn't walk. They needed to drive. The challenge wasn't just building a car. It was building a car that could fold into a tiny storage bay, survive a launch, a three-day trip through the cold void of space, and a landing on a world with one-sixth the gravity of Earth. It had to be light. Every pound added to the lunar module meant a second of precious fuel burned during the final terrifying descent. The engineers at Boeing and General Motors knew this. They built a rover that weighed just 460 pounds, a featherweight by Earth standards, but could carry more than its own mass, including two astronauts and their gear. This was achieved by constructing the frame from a special 2219 aluminum alloy tubing that provided a perfect balance of strength and lightness. But a moon car needs wheels. This wasn't a job for rubber tires, which would have melted on the lunar day and cracked in the cold of night. The solution was brilliant in its simplicity. A wheel made of woven zinc-coated steel piano wire mesh. Think of it less as a tire and more as a flexible, spring-like basket. Inside this mesh was a stiff inner frame to prevent over-deflection, and on the outside, thin titanium strips were attached to give the wheel traction in the powdery lunar soil. The entire design was a masterclass in elegant problem-solving. Then there was the issue of power. On the moon, there's no gas station, no charging port, the LRV had to run on its own power from the moment it was deployed until the last rock sample was collected. The vehicle was equipped with two 36-volt, non-rechargeable silver-zinc batteries. This choice was deliberate. A single battery could power the rover in an emergency, but both were used for optimal performance. The batteries were lightweight and offered sufficient power to cover the mission's range. And what a range it was! On Apollo 15, the LRV covered over 17 miles, reaching speeds of up to 9.2 kilometers per hour. On Apollo 17, Astronaut Eugene Cernan hit a top speed of 18 kilometers per hour, setting a lunar land speed record. But the most incredible part of this machine was its transformation. The LRV arrived on the moon as a folded up contraption a mechanical puzzle tucked into the side of the lunar module. The engineers had designed a semi-automatic deployment system, 
but it was anything but effortless. The astronauts, standing on the lunar surface, had to pull on tapes and pulleys to guide the vehicle out of its bay. As the rover was lowered, its rear wheels and chassis unfolded and locked into place. Then the front of the vehicle, the seats, and the antenna were manually unfolded and locked. It was a ballet of human and machine, a choreographed dance of careful precision in a place where one wrong move could spell disaster. Once fully deployed, the LRV was a true workhorse. It had a unique T-shaped hand controller for steering, acceleration, and braking, allowing for all-wheel drive and four-wheel steering for an incredible 122-inch turning radius. The suspension system, with linear piston dampers, was designed to handle the bumpy, crater-filled terrain, providing 14 inches of ground clearance when fully loaded. The LRV was a marvel of mechanical design, but what truly set it apart was how it was built to survive. The engineers faced a brutal reality, the lunar surface. It's not a soft, welcoming place. It's a field of jagged rocks, deep craters, and a powdery, abrasive dust that gets into everything. To tackle this, they designed a suspension system that was both rugged and lightweight. Each of the four wheels was independently driven by its own quarter horsepower electric motor. This independent wheel drive was a critical piece of redundancy. If one wheel failed, the others could carry the load, a non-negotiable feature for a mission where failure was not an option. But the most subtle and perhaps most important piece of the puzzle was the vehicle's defense against the moon itself. The lunar surface temperature swings wildly from nearly 250 degrees Fahrenheit during the day to minus 250 degrees at night. This wasn't a problem that could be solved with air conditioning or a heater. The solution was an intricate system of thermal control. The batteries and other sensitive components were insulated to stay within their operating range. They used special radiators with fused silica mirrors to radiate heat away from the vehicle during the scorching lunar day. To keep them from being covered in the insidious dust, these radiators were mounted on the underside of the rover, facing away from the churning wheels. And then there was the question of getting home. Out on the lunar plains, with no familiar landmarks, how did the astronauts know where they were? A compass is useless in a vacuum. The LRV had a sophisticated yet simple dead reckoning navigation system. This system kept track of the rover's heading and distance traveled. A low-tech GPS for a new world. This system was so accurate that it could guide the crew back to within 328 feet of their lunar module, a precision that was, frankly, astonishing. The LRVs remain on the moon today, silent monuments to human ingenuity and determination. They are the ultimate testament to the men and women who accepted no nonsense, who felt the deep weight of the challenge, and who, with caring authority and unyielding resolve, stuck with it to the very end. The LRV isn't just a car that drove on the moon, it's a symbol of what we can do when we are bold enough to try.